a welcome to my coffee with Amira. And I was pondering because I've ref been reflecting on, you know, this whole manifesting challenge that I created here for you. And where this was going, I had no idea. So I literally created it because I needed a reset. And I recognized in working with people uh, for the past 24 years that the, the people that I serve the best and most frequently are people that are looking for a reset in their life at some point. Perhaps it's in their career. Perhaps they've um, had a relationship shift or change or a health condition. And so we're constantly resetting. And ultimately, I was reflecting back on the very first training, personal development training, and my curiosity began with manifesting. And I might, you might have heard me share it. I took this training when I was in Canada, it was called manifesting uh, the master key to riches. And it was a weekend training it was very intense. The boyfriend that I had, his sister was actually the one that shared it with us. And so it was fantastic. And I think all along my path, I've been trying to refine and integrate what some of the great teachers, Napoleon Hill, Florence Govel Shin, the teachings from the religious science movement, trying to incorporate the basics of science with my feelings. And, and then, of course, the secret came along. Prior to the secret being launched in my near-death experience, I had my own intimate experience with the divine where I could actually see and I stepped in to what they did, God or my guide told me was the fabric of all creation. And they actually showed me a timeline where I, my emotions and my feelings were the things that were sabotaging me on my path. So I digress a little bit. So I started pondering all of those bits of what I've accumulated and how I created a system that helped me and my clients over the last 24 years. That was basically the foundation, the crux, the core, the heart of everything that I've been doing. We want to create what we want, right? Everybody wants it. And yet we stumble along trying to figure out the best, quickest, easiest way. Some of us read books till infinitum. And ultimately, it's an experience that we have to step into. And ultimately, I realized it was my emotions and my thoughts that were keeping me stuck. And there was actually a system to overcome that. Now, I was reflecting back on the, you know, we want our dream, but so many of us get stuck with thinking about too many things. And I realized in our conversation yesterday is that how we um, get distracted or we're focusing on too many things and that dilutes the energetic vibration or the momentum moving forward. Okay. So the first step, and I realize what is it, how can I serve you best? How can I support you in taking the steps to manifesting that one incredible thing, our mission for this 90 day period. And we've got to focus on, I believe what our history and what we've spent a lot of our time or where we've got experience. And for me, it was about manifesting. It was about my emotions. It was about my spirituality and being able to serve you in a way that made sense for you. So I was reflecting on this lady that was referred to me years ago. I was working in Dubai. I'm going to call her Penny. She was referred by a um, internist medical doctor and they were working on her challenge of being depressed she was depressed she was a very she was a happy she had a happy home life her husband was a highly successful businessman she had wonderful two boys she was a great participant in her boys activities but it was coming to a point where she wanted to do something more for herself and her life she wanted purpose besides just i mean being a mom is incredible and she was a great homemaker but there was something missing for her in her life and so in working with her it was the depression 
that they couldn't resolve naturally. She didn't want to go on medications. And so we, we continued doing the process of looking at the energy of what where her blocks were. So it was about the fourth session I had with her. And I could see this energy and frequency that she had a passion around cooking. And I mentioned to her, you know, I said, do you, do you like cooking? And she just flew off the chair. She darn near hit the ceiling in my loft apartment. And she goes, I love cooking. She was just coming unglued. She was just so excited about it, right? Now here's the catch. I said, well, that's it. That's your purpose. And she was like, oh, no, 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 no. I'm going, I'm registered at Stanford. I've, I'm, you know, my family is well to do. We have these expectations. I can only attend an Ivy League school. So she had these parameters. She's had a set of belief systems and rules in her mind, in her, I call it her energy field. Um, all the way, everything she did was based on that set of belief systems and structure she had for herself. And she had blinders on. She had blinders on potentials and possibilities. Now, I want to say that Penny was a great manifester, and she was very creative, and she was continually coming up with ideas. Now, here's the downside with that. When she'd sit at the dinner table and she'd present this new great idea for a business or some project, and, you know, it was like the perpetual eye roll. Everybody was like, here we go again. <laughs> Another idea that she's never going to complete. And so she had this fear of whatever she did, wasn't gonna, she wasn't going to finish it. And so that was part of her fear, even registering with Stanford, is she was like, you know, if I commit and spend all this money, then I will, I will stick with it. I will do it. I will do it. And then it'll be a big goal and my family will, re, you know, respect me. They will uh, appreciate me because, wow, I got this degree from this Ivy League school. So honestly, it was a process of probably another four sessions together where we started to dissolve and resolve the um, blocks in terms of her understanding how we could make a dream or taking her passion and fulfilling it into something that was so incredible beyond her imagination that would be successful and it would be right up her alley. So little by little, what we started to do is dissolve those blocks and beliefs she had put up for herself. She started to interview chefs in Dubai and she started going to the four-star chefs and the Michelin chefs and inquiring and exploring it and little by little she had enough courage to take a class because why it was just fulfilling a satisfaction or something that pleased her got her excited and so she started exploring courses so we didn't start with setting up a business plan and picking out a name. She started feeling it and exploring it and giving herself permission to perhaps reframe the way she saw possibilities. So what was interesting is all the while we're clearing her energy and, and she had some practices that she continued with at home. And in doing that, Little by little, she was able to stretch a little bit more and more possibilities and potentials came up for her to entertain. What was interesting is she registered for this class in Paris. Well, actually, she came to me and she said, well, Amira, I've got this, this idea, da, 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 da. And we were looking at the class and possibilities. Well, it's in Paris. Oh, my God, who's going to pick the boys up from school? And my husband won't let me go for a week. And, and there was all of these things. What's the family going to do? Who's going to cook for them? And, and, and. Lo and behold, after having a discussion with them, telling them about her dream, enrolling them, they created a whole family plan where they would meet her in Paris, she would go for her five days, they'd meet her on the weekend, they'd tour Paris together, and I think it was a two-week uh, training she was going for, and then she would continue her training, they would stay some part of it, and the rest they would 
figure it out from there. So everybody got on board and were super excited, not only to support her doing something that was really exciting and fun for her, but they made it a group fun event. Now, a couple things happened from that. Interestingly enough, and I got goosebumps every time I tell this story, she um, had a friend that was living in Paris. And so she called her up and said, you know, can we have dinner? Well, the friend said, great. Um, I've got this other friend from Carmel, which was where they were all originally from visiting. Um, let's have dinner together. So, oh, I forgot the most, one of the most important parts. So she, when she registered for the Cordon Bleu School of Cooking, which happens to be five-star cooking, the creme de la creme, you know, Ivy League of cooking. Um, she was, she registered for this training, but because she was the only one, she actually got private training. Okay. So there she was in this amazing training, five-star training, Ivy League. And she was the only one. She said she had private cooking training. Then she meets this friend for the um for dinner and the other friend that joined them happens to have a business in their hometown where she was planning to move back to who was creating lunches for executive businessmen and he had a commercial kitchen and he invited her to come and make her pastries in his commercial kitchen and sell the the desserts at the luncheon how about that I mean, it was miraculous how everything fell into place because she was so over the top excited about her dream. Well, it kept getting better and better and better. And one amusing thing is I remember asking her, well, what are you going to call the name of the restaurant or the her business? And although she was going through a business plan, the whole thing started evolving as we worked together. And when um, she shared that with me, it meant it, it was the name of her nickname as a kid. So here it meant dessert in her um, cultural um, language. And yet she picked that name, but it was the nickname her family called her as a little girl. So she was living her dream without knowing it. She embodied that dream. There was something deep within her that because she had passion for her desserts as a little kid. Okay, so I, I'm sharing this story because we often have these blinders in, in what we see as a potential or possibility for ourselves. As we're all coming um, back to this, trying to recreate ourselves in, an, in a new normal world, we're figuring it out and doing things different. Even my, myself, you know, creating this manifesting challenge has been a little bit messy. And, and here I am being forced to speak on the fly with you and share. And that this has been uncomfortable, quite honestly. And so I'm doing something different. Even my setting today, I created something different. So I'm inviting you to look at where can you create something different for yourself it's the same Amira I'm showing up in a different seat okay and um and presenting it in a whole new way so I um I'm, I'm going to open it up now and and share with you uh or invite you to you know uh, comment on that or ask me any questions I'm here to serve you in refining, defining your purpose, perhaps, or what's your next step, or in focusing on our one incredible thing, what's the first priority that we can set in motion to um, bring forth um, more of who we are and fulfill, love ourselves, and um, be in honor with our purpose, our intention, what we're all about getting clear. So welcome. Was was there anybody that wanted to um, add to that, comment on that, ask um, something that you want to share? Well, Amira, I will jump in and say that I think that's one of the most powerful illustrations of allowing your spirit to breathe and, and to have fun creating. I love how you took her on an exploration of who she really, you know, what she really loved. I thought it was just a magnificent story and I took away a lot from it. 
Well, honey, thank you. And you know, here's the thing. She came to me because she was really stuck in depression. She couldn't think her way out of the box. She wanted to sleep all the time. She would drive the kids to school, pick them up. But the rest of the time she was just moping around. And so her and the, her doctor couldn't get her out of it. So we, we weren't looking for, yes, she wanted purpose, but the first priority was she was depressed. That was, she knew there was something wrong. Not it, she wasn't herself, right? So how do we get to finding our purpose? We we have to clear the energetic blocks, and that's why I created the tools and why the practices are up there. And quite honestly, you know, I'm guilty of just throwing you guys into the practice, just driving in it, getting in it, getting messy, trying to figure it out. But I'm I wanted to give you the bath. You just need to clean up, right? Because that will open up. The next step hopefully some of us need a little bit more and we want to talk about it with someone and i can assist you with that and that but the whole point is if you're listening to this just go ahead and start the practices they are very powerful tools they are drive-through tools they will start loosening up that energetic flow to open up inspiration and creativity and give you courage and um, help you to rethink perhaps where you've had blinders on unbeknownst to us we're all we're all programmed you know, growing up, our environment, our, our cultural, you know, situation, um, and uh, the times, and the situation that our parents are facing, whether it's financial, whether it's limits in terms of how much education we can have, or who we can truly be. Um, you know, nobody in my family had a college degree. And honestly, I was the first to get a two-year degree. I got one in interior design. And then when I got married to my husband, that wasn't enough. So I got a bachelor's degree. And, you know, then, yeah, so I didn't even have family support coming to celebrate my graduations because it wasn't important to them. They didn't value any of that. And so it's interesting how I reflect back and did that have to stop me? Did I cry or did I feel bad about it? Perhaps. And when I reflect on everybody else that gets the support to make their next step or to celebrate their wins, I honestly didn't have that. So I had to find it within myself to, well, what inspires me is inspiring you. And so, so thanks. Thanks, Karen, for, for being here yourself and pushing through some of your preconditioning well it's certainly my pleasure and also I had gone through a period of motherhood where we had just moved and I was that you know uh, 12 out of 10 at home mom doing activities for the children but I was lacking in something and was struggling to find it and when I uh, got in touch with my inner being but more importantly, when I started to create the things I was a was passionate about, um, it's, it turned around for me as well. But also I can be, I am a witness to your tools, which I've been using for quite some time, some of your energy clearing tools. And I have had my, you know, one small miracle. So I'm very happy about that. <laughs> well, we're shooting for bigger miracles, right? Well, you say the one thing that one, that, that one, yeah. that one miracle. So yes, is it, 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 the one the small one leads, it is the door that opened to the whole path. So thank you very much. So what is your priority right now, um, today? Maybe it's like you had, you mentioned you had all these five books that you wanted to create. You know, I'd, I'd really encourage you to focus on one, pick one. Oh yeah, I, I, I don't know. So two days ago in our uh, coffee chat, um, you said, I'm going to hold you accountable. Oh, and, yeah. How, um, how's that going? I was thinking about that. No, yesterday. That, was, that was it. I know exactly what I'm doing now. And all I needed was I, 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 I uh, was having a conversation with another woman. We were out walking our dogs this morning and she was talking about we were talking about how you have to process things, but you also have to make room for things So the clearing of the energy. And I said, it's like little wheels, the little cogs that are coming into motion and then all of a sudden there you know it all falls in place and all the gears start to wind and that's what happened to me so that day when you said i want to make sure you're committed and i'm going to check on you i'm going to be your accountability partner sure enough 
it all fell into place. I've been working on it and working on it and it finally cleared. And yes, I'm working on the children's fiction books before the nonfiction teen books. So yes, thank you so much. And yes, I am like climbing to the top of the mountain now. Awesome, awesome. Just being on a track. And you know, that could change, right? You could change. There's no rule that you have to stick with it. But until we commit ourselves to one thing, then, I mean, yeah, we're going to have some other things that along the way that need to have some boxes checked, et cetera, and take care of things. I've got other projects on the go. Um, and this whole thing is helping me get clear. Like, what can I serve you with? How can I help you get more clear? Right? Well, and, and like you said, um, you, uh, so I learned many years ago, taking an art class at the University of South Florida when I was uh, 19. And it was all about letting the project breathe, whether it was a sculpture that I was working on, a wood sculpture at the time, but allowing it to breathe its own life. And so, yes, as I go forward with the books, I'm already finding that I'm getting new ideas for the characters. And yes, you may get to the first draft and go, oh yeah, that's really bad. I've got to edit that now. But yes, I so believe uh, that once you're in tune, you allow it to develop and expand. Yes. Yeah. And it might lead you to listening to podcasts with what other writers are dealing with and give you some sense of, you know, oh yeah, that I'm doing the same thing. Gee, maybe I need to shift that. Okay. That's a bad habit. Or um, maybe I need to, you know, go to the library. I've never been to the library here where I'm at. Maybe I need to go to a different coffee shop and get some inspiration or focus on my, my endeavor, whatever that might be, sit in a different place in your house you know, create a different office. And um, all these little things as we shift, it, it just, I don't know, it's like, it's part of the energetic shift, part of the cogs in the wheels that you so aptly say. Yeah. Fantastic. I love it. I love it, Karen. You put all your creative juices into that one project. Your what is it? Uh, teenage fiction? Well, no, no, so there's, um, you know, so uh, I, I was always encouraged to be a writer. I always knew I would, but I said, I'm going to wait to my 60s, like a lot of the other old ladies when their kids are grown. Of course, now old is not 60s, it's the 80s. But either way, I knew I needed to get started on this journey. But there were other things that had to be cleared out of the way, commitments and life events. As you said, there's going to be projects along the way, but also defining which project I'm going to write them all. But which one do I start with that will have, you know, harness my passion, the one I really love but also make the most sense for right now. So yes, I have you know a, a picture book for children, a series. I have little mid-grade readers and both of those are fiction. And then I have the nonfiction about leadership for teenagers. So, but I'm starting with the less business-like one, the one that's closest to my heart. I fell in love with reading as a child with American fe or with uh, female heroes, Joan of Arc, Amelia Earhart, um, Annie Oakley. <laughs> you know? Yeah, so I love fantastic. it that my yeah, this book series that I'm focusing on is about heroes and female heroes as well. So I love it. <laughs> yeah, wonderful. I'd love to see how they manifest those female heroes. <laughs> well, don't forget you're my accountability partner now. So. Oh, yes, I'm going to see, aren't I? I'm going to read about it. Yes, you are. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's fantastic. And, you know, one other thing you mentioned, you sort of touched on it, is, you know, we've got life happening around us. Some people are dealing with an elderly parent. Some people are dealing with some health issues or, or a loved one that's got health issues and or, you know, kids going to school or a career change or, um, you know, finding they want to find the money or realize that they need to do something different with their finances to regroup. And so we want to focus on the step we're in right? We don't want to get so like, you need to focus on the family challenge, if that's what it is, or, or like, my client Penny, we were focusing on her depression. And that was the first step. We couldn't think about what her really the life purpose didn't present itself quite yet. We weren't ready for that yet. Right? That was way too much to take on. We have to start where we're at, focus on where we're at. And then we carve up like you said, carve the whole um, sculpture from that. When we try and eat the whole buffet with the first bite, that just, you know, is a messy picture. <laughs> it's really well, messy. It, Yes. And, you know, and you're so right what you said, Amira, because 
you do the best where you're at. You give 100% because you don't know where that's going to lead you. So it is important, even for young people starting for jobs, you know, they want to already be the executive. No, no, here's your entry level position, you know, rise and shine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Pour it all in. You're all in. You're in the game or you're not in the game. You know, you can't sit on the sidelines and say you're player. You know, True. Yeah. so yeah, so that's great. Um, I really appreciate you um, sharing. Was there any question you had about what you're, where you're at and the step you're in, in terms of um, staying grounded? Because I know that's been a challenge for you. And, you know, when we talk about focus, that's with our mind. But grounding is also an integral part of being able to focus. If we've got all this nervous energy and we've got to do all these other things that are just clouding our perspective, then we can't start with that one thing, right? So we do have to clear the deck and focus on the first thing, right? And that implies being grounded, which is one of the very first tools I work with everybody. And if you want to know more about the tools, um, Stress Buster is you can go to my homepage, amirahall.com. There's a free download for the Stress Buster. You can sign up for my newsletter where I'll share all these tips but as part of the manifesting challenge, jump in the very first day. That's the first thing we focus on is releasing the energy so we can become more present and more grounded and embody so that we can do our first step. Yeah. Exactly. So to, 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 to answer your question, remember, I've done the stress buster. What is it? I think it's been a decade, Amir. I'm not, I don't have to go back <laughs> in my notes, but you first gave me that tool. It was the most successful meditative tool I've ever used because it did ground me. And recently once, yes, when you do have different commitments, once that was clear and I go, oh my gosh, I get a right now. What am I going to write about? I had already set up my grounding. And again, your stress buster on on, on your uh, website, you know, what a magnificent gift that you're giving to people. So yes, I've got the grounding and it's clearing and staying clear. So once I start to hear a message, sometimes it's that one intuition that answered my question, I can get up for the day and go. You talk, you know, we talked about someone who wanted to do her kitchen cabinets. I found if I don't have the right, like you said, a new office or a new perspective, you might have a different place in your house where you work. Until I, I, I if you look at it, you go, well, what's stick, you know, what is keeping my energy stuck that I can't do that, that um, project? I've got a couple sitting around my house as well. And it's like, okay, I'm just not really into it. I either need to pack it up and just wait till the right moment and know and trust that it will come. Or I need to set up, I realize I can't spread out. Or I need a place where I can have a work environment that's more conducive. So, yes. Yeah, so thank you so much. Because I, I do heartily recommend people use that stress buster exercise you have online. And uh, yes, I use it very well. Thank you. Oh, well, I'm so happy to hear that. You know, it, it, when you keep doing the same thing over and over, sometimes we need to shift it up. But it is part of my seven basic tools that I teach all my mentoring students. And once we get those principles down and integrate them, you don't have to listen to the recording. You can just sit and do it. And aligning with those earth energies and cosmic energies that remind you that you are energy, right? And, and keeping that, we haven't been trained. Our monkey minds are thinking about our, our to-do lists and everybody's pulling on us all day long and what they need. Need, right? So we have to get disciplined with that. So it is a practice. It requires some discipline. It requires us to build a level of focus and we start trusting that process. And that trust builds into courage to taking bigger and bigger steps. So I think that's awesome. Karen, thank you again for joining me. And hey, um, let's create some more miracles this week staying present and grounded and focused. And I will see you again tomorrow, same time, 10 a.m. Or 11 Eastern time, right? It's 10 for me. <laughs>